Welcome to a new season of Leadership Live podcast, where talented people become extraordinary leaders. I'm Daphna Horowitz, and I'm here to help you cut through the noise and talk about real leadership issues, down-to-earth, solid, caring, and confident leadership. No theory, no pie in the sky, no frills or fluff, because this is what the world needs most right now, for you to lead with confidence, clarity, and impact so that you can build a business that builds people, grows profit, and makes a difference. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world, whatever time zone you're in, I am delighted that you are joining me for this new season of Leadership Live podcast. After doing season one and completing 25 episodes, I am now back with season two, and we have got a jam-packed season of different kinds of episodes. I've got solo sessions lined up for you. I've also got coaching sessions and interviews. So lots of exciting people that we're talking to and also some thoughts and episodes from me as always. And today is a solo episode. This is me. I wanted to talk to you and to start off the season by talking about habits because I really believe that When we become aware of our habits, our automated responses to things, and start thinking about them and being conscious about what habits we cultivate, we can really elevate our performance, our fulfillment, our joy levels to new levels and new heights that make us feel a whole lot better about ourselves and also a whole lot more successful. So I really want to talk about habits and I'll begin with saying what is a habit So really a habit is any pattern of behavior that we repeat regularly until it becomes natural and instinctive. So a lot of our daily behaviors are actually habitual. A lot of things that we might not even think about as habits are actually habits. And things, those are things like brushing our teeth, drinking our morning coffee. You know how you wake up in the morning and you can't go without your cup of coffee? That is part of our habit, part of our waking up routine that we are just so used to and we know we need to get this cup of coffee in. The pace of our stride, how fast or slow we walk when we are, uh, you know, going for a stroll or even going for exercise. Those are things that we've done so many times that they are now hardwired into our brain so that they're automated and we just do them naturally without thinking about it. And something else that can be considered as a habit is driving. And that's just a really good example to look at because if you cast your mind back for those of you who are drivers out there, if you think about the time when you learned how to drive or think about anything that you learn for the first time, in the beginning, it's really hard. And there's so many things you need to think about and place your attention on. And you think it's really going to be a long time until you get it right. So with driving... It takes so much practice to really feel like we've got this learned and down pattern naturally for us. But once we know how to drive and we've practiced enough and we've done it often enough, it actually just becomes so automated that we don't even think about it. And then while we're driving, we're thinking about a whole lot of things on our way to wherever it is that we're going. Unless, of course, we're going somewhere new and that requires a lot more of conscious thinking. Um... But if we, especially if we're taking a regular trip, something that we do often, then we know that uh, we can think of a hundred other things. We might be listening to the radio, we might be listening to an audio book, or we might be thinking about the meeting that we're driving to or what we're going to have for dinner that night. And that's when our brain is able to file away something that is so natural and, and automated for us. And we're able to think about a a whole lot of other things while we're doing that automated behavior. So anything that's automated, anything that's been hardwired in our brain is actually considered a habit. And my question to you is, why not consider leadership to be a habit too? And this is my particular area of passion because, as you may know, I work with leaders to become more effective in their leadership behaviors. Now, there's a level that we move from when we are really good at what we do. We are top performers, high achievers. We've got our work and performance pretty solidly under our belt. We know what we're doing. 
and we get promoted to certain levels or we decide to open a business and now we need other skills, which are leadership skills, which are all about leading a business, leading a team, leading ourselves, becoming aware of our behaviors and our impact. And that's a completely new skill set. And it doesn't have to be so complicated because really we can break it down into habits, make it practical and simple, and then we can really grow in our leadership skills as well. So that's my approach. My approach is to to consider leadership a habit and to really break it down into steps that we can easily implement and just grow in ourselves as we go through, through our career and business path. So now, just to take a pause here for a moment and say, I know that there are a lot of people who think of leadership as a title. Uh, Maybe they associate it with status, position, or the number of people that you are in charge of. I see leadership as much broader than that. I think leadership applies in different areas of our life. It's a skill that can be learned. And even if you don't have direct reports, or even if you not even working at the moment, it doesn't have to do with work. If you look at different areas of our life, we are leading ourselves, we might be uh, setting an example for people, especially if we parents, we've got children who look to us for how to navigate our world, how to learn certain behaviors. So wherever we are, we actually have an opportunity to show leadership. And this is really how I want you to start thinking about leadership. It's not about getting an official stamp of approval to lead via title or position of authority. It really doesn't matter who you're leading at any point in time. And it's really not about telling people what to do. It actually begins with leading ourselves. So really becoming aware of our behaviors and how they serve us or perhaps sometimes hold us back. And when we become aware of how we are, we start to understand our impact in the world. And once we understand our impact, which is really on other people, then we can really look at what are the outcomes we're wanting to achieve. And those outcomes can be in business, they can be in community, they can be in family, they can be with friendships, really in many, many different areas that uh, we can show leadership. Let's take a look at habits from the perspective of how our brain works. The key thing here is that our brain automates everything. Its main aim is to make regular processes easier by keeping things simple and clearing our working memory. This helps make room for new information all the time. So because we're constantly bombarded with new data and new information, Our brain needs to have a way to filter this data to keep the stuff that we need to use and to be able to discard the stuff that we don't need to use. And in this way, we can keep our minds fresh for any new information that comes in and and so that we don't exhaust ourselves and use up all our energy on the things that we do all the time. So what I mean by this is that anything that we repeat, our brain automates, files away so that it can happen in the background without us having to use energy to do that so that we keep our energy free for new things that are coming in. So anything that we repeat, whether our our brain has no um, decision making around what's useful and what isn't useful, anything that we repeat gets automated. Okay. So now if you look at examples like good habits, such as exercising or reading or speaking politely, Those are great habits to have. And as soon as we do that a few times, you know, if it's exercising, as soon as we exercise a few times and the general convention is 21 times of good exercise will create a habit in our brain. So once we've got that habit hardwired, it will be easier to exercise every single time. So as soon as we've repeated it, it gets automated. Same with bad habits. So if we do things like, interrupting people when they're speaking or talking with our mouth full, which, you know, are perhaps not such great habits. If we do this a few times, if we repeat it a few times, our brain is going to automate that too, because our brain doesn't pick what's good for us and what's not good for us. Our brain automates anything that we repeat. So actually, it's on us to decide which are the habits that we want to have automated and which are the habits that we'd prefer not to. 
And this is where our discernment comes in. It's not a brain thing. It's our own self deciding how are we going to, or what are we going to choose to automate? And what are we going to choose to discard? So the things that we don't want to have form formed as a habit in our brain, we really should be aware of and not repeat. And the things that we do want to form as a habit in our brain, we really should try to repeat. So I'll give another example of that is, for example, uh, complimenting your, your colleagues or your team, giving compliments for work well done. Now, I often hear from managers that when people do their job, they don't believe that they should compliment them because it's just part of their job. But the truth is that if you compliment someone, first of all, you're getting into the habit of acknowledging something good and positive. And actually, for the person who you're complimenting, it's also helping with the automation and hard wiring of that habit. So if you want your people to do more of the good things, keep complimenting them because that creates the hard wiring in their brain as well. And at the same time, creates a habit for you of giving people compliments, which is really never a bad thing. So this is what I say about leadership. Let's look at leadership as a set of skills that we can turn into habits by repeating and automating them so that we can free our brain and our energy to focus on new things that come in and then leadership just becomes a habit. And that's really what we want to, want to create. So you may know that I've written this book, Weekly Habits for Extraordinary Leaders, and it really is all about that. Taking leadership skills, breaking them down into small, practical, simple steps so that they can be repeated, automated, and turn it, turned into habits. So feel free to go grab yourself a copy. You can buy one off Amazon.com or go visit my website at DaphnaHorovitz.com where you can download a free sample of the book so that you can start your journey of creating leadership habits that are going to turn you into an extraordinary leader. Before I end off this episode, I really want to give you four steps for turning positive behaviors into habits. There are four steps to do that. So first of all, you've got to pick the habit, the, the behavior that you want to turn into a habit. And then you can follow these four simple steps in order to be able to hardwire it and automate it so it becomes a habit. So once you've picked the, the thing, the behavior that you want to turn into a habit, the important thing is to keep it really simple. Break it down into small steps. So make it as small as possible to start with. So for example, if you want to be able to do 100 push-ups in, in one go, I mean, that's a lot of push-ups. Uh, for me, it's really, really tough. I, I'm really battling with getting to 10, but I'm working on it. So if your ultimate goal is to be able to do 100 push-ups, start with one. Do one every day and then build on from there. Do one for a week and then do two the next week and three the next week. Just keep it so simple and so small that it's actually easy to do. It's easy to start. The second step is linking it to an activity that you're already doing. So, for example, for me, when I go for a run, so even though I have been running for a while now, I do still find it difficult sometimes to get out. So what I do is I'll get changed into my running clothes. And that creates a link in my mind that at some point I will run. So if I'm really not in the mood and I know that I want to run, it will be good for me, I just get into my running clothes. And then at some point I will say, okay, well, I'm already dressed, so I'll just get out. So I linked my activity to, of running to just changing into those clothes. Another way of looking at it is linking it to an activity that you're already doing. So for example, if you want to read more, Something you could do is just say that you're going to link it to your bedtime routine. So before you go to bed, you're going to set aside 10 minutes for reading. And that's part of your bedtime routine. So after you brush teeth, you sit in bed, read for 10 minutes, and then get into bed and continue the, continue the, more, the nighttime routine and, and you know, get to sleeping. So that's step two, linking it to an activity that you're already doing. Step three is about tracking it. And tracking it is really, really useful in terms of keeping you accountable and seeing your progress. So it actually encourages you. It's almost, you know, getting into the competitive or game 
spirit with yourself. Okay, you're not competing with anyone else. You're only uh, encouraging yourself and you're encouraging yourself to beat your previous record. So create some kind of a system that's easy for you to to track your progress with with a with a habit that you've chosen. So it could be a reminder in your calendar. It could be an Excel sheet that you mark off. It could be a physical chart or a calendar that you just tick off every single day what you've done. Create a place where you can track it and monitor what you're doing. For me, with my running, something that I love to do is I'm part of a challenge where I'm encouraged. You know, the, the challenge is to run a thousand kilometers in a year. And every time I run, I see those kilometers adding up on the app that I use. And that encourages me because every time I see those number, numbers growing, and that's a way of tracking how many kilometers I've run in a whole year. And that encourages me to keep going. And then the fourth step is actually giving yourself a reward. Reward yourself for every milestone. So when I started running, and I know I've used a lot of running examples here, yeah, but that's that's been a, a really difficult habit for me to get going and keep going. And I, I'm really proud of how I've managed to do it. But when I started running, I didn't care how long I was going to run or how fast. I just rewarded myself for getting out of the house. So getting dressed and leaving the house and going for a run, no matter how long it lasted or how fast I ran, didn't matter if I did it, that was my reward. And in the beginning, uh, it was summer and I'd come home and reward myself with an ice cream at the end of the run. So that was really something that helped me to, to get going on that and to keep going with my running. So those are the four steps. I'm just going to repeat them. One is keep it simple, break it down into small, small steps. Two is link it to an activity that you're already doing. Three, track it. And four, reward yourself for every milestone, even the little ones. So then the best way to make sure that you're on a path of learning and growth is to turn your desired behavior into a habit. If you want to get better at anything, you need to take small steps that make it easy enough to do and then build on those. This is the way you can support yourself in reaching a point where habits become absolutely automated and then you get to choose which habits you want to automate through deciding what they are and then repeating them often enough. And then your brain will take over and then you'll see that your brain actually gets you to do that habit without you having to think about it too much. So just here's my invitation to you for today. Just pick one. Pick one thing that you would like to do and that you would like to turn into a habit. And then just repeat it every day for the next. There's, I believe that there's two steps. There's the four day step and then there's the 21 day step. The four day step I find is really hard. If you can get to do something four times, Somehow after the fourth time when you get to the fifth time, it's already you're on that roller coaster, on that treadmill. You, you've gained a little bit of momentum. When you can get it done for 21 times or 21 days, then your brain will start taking over and just doing it for you. So just start. Choose one thing. If you're looking for ideas, please do go ahead and pick up a sample or, or buy my book on Amazon and choose one thing that you're going to do for the next four days and then the next 21 days and see how you can build your leadership habit. And I believe that's the way to become extraordinary leaders because when we're really good at what we do and we want to move into that space of being a world-class leader, it really is about developing those habits that are going to get you there. So that's episode one from me, all about habits. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So let's continue the conversation as always. Please feel free to connect with me on various social media or just pop me an email and let me know what you think. And very soon I will be launching a program for building leadership habits. So if that is something that you're interested in, visit my website at daphnahorovitz.com and send me a note to say you would like to know more. And there will definitely be details on there as well. So go well, choose yourself a habit, and let's start building our leadership habits that will turn you into an extraordinary world-class leader with a thriving team that rallies behind you.
this wraps up another episode of Leadership Live. Thank you for joining us today. And now let's continue the conversation. Do you have any questions, comments, or suggestions? Connect with me on LinkedIn or head on to my website at DaphnaHorovitz.com where you can download a free sample of my new book, Weekly Habits for Extraordinary Leaders. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with a friend so that I can continue to reach and support leaders just like you. So tune in next week to Leadership Live, where talented people become extraordinary leaders.